next, uh, we're going to have a short break after this. Oh, just one thing. We've got a collection now called the, uh, the Book of Ten. And uh, I asked uh, writers to write a poem on the theme of ten. And uh, that's what they did. And we've got, um, I think, the 77 poets in the collection. It's normally six pounds, but you can have a copy for a fiver. Ideal Christmas present. <laughs> and the poets from Newcastle, uh, most of them that you've heard tonight, uh, will hear in the second half uh, in it as well. Uh, our next uh, uh, writer, performer, was somebody who greeted us at the door tonight. It was great. We're coming down the main street there, wondering where that's going. Oh, there's a truck, and somebody ran out. And, and helped us uh, park up and find the place. And he was Mike Watts, who was the co-founder and host of Right to Speak. He's a writer, performer, has performed at venues up and down the country, at the Camden Fringe at this year's Freedom Festival. And he has his first anthology of poetry coming out uh, in the new year, which is called Coming to a Street Near You. Coming to a mic near you now is Mike Watts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'd just like to say a big thank you to Jeff actually and for the guys who have come across and also to my good friend Joe for actually uh, helping to sort all this out. So yeah. cheers Joe. <laughs> right. As Jeff was so kind to point out, um, yeah, I have my first anthology out and this is um, this is the title poem. This is Coming to a Street Near You. He's got tattooed arms as thick as logs and struts around with two big dogs, Rottweilers, all teeth and gob, to compensate his tiny knob. He goes to work and he still signs on. He's got no respect for anyone and he's really nasty when he's pissed. And he answers critics with his fist. He got arrested at his own wedding. He punched and kicked the vicar's head and his wife and kids are just as bad. The worst neighbours I've ever had. But I'm happy to announce that fuck... I've had a massive stroke of luck. Because of all the noise and mess, they've got to find a new address. After four years of taking the piss, I'm happy to announce an eviction notice was served by the council and the police to this city's biggest disturber of peace. So that's that. Problem solved. A family of freaks who've never evolved and are looking for someplace else to go. So be on your guard, because you never know. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, it was from hell, terrible. Right, this next one, this is, um, well, it's about relationships, really, and how terrible they can be. Um, you know, be like maybe celibate, celibate here, celibate there, you know, for your <laughs> uh, Anyway, this is, uh, sorry about that. This is, now, she's gone. Every Friday was pizza night. And we'd share a large pepperoni with extra chilli and a box of fries which I always dished out 60-40 because she was too gorgeous to be ruined by equal portions. <laughs> then I'd make a black coffee for her and a wheat tea for me, then slot in a DVD which we'd never finish because I couldn't leave her alone. And after jabbing the remote, we'd go at it fiercely. And the spice in our mouths would transform our tongues into lightsabers as we slammed into each other like two WWF stars. <laughs> and I swear to God, I would give anything to have those nights again. Instead of standing here, clawing at my scalp, and realising how one solitary, stupid moment of weakness can vaporise forever the most amazing times and leave you spending Friday nights with a bowl of cereal and a big stash of DVDs that you'll finally get to see the end of. Thank you. Can I just say, if you see a, a wet patch developing it, I'm not nervous, I'm just really lazy. <laughs> uh, right. This, uh, this next poem I'd like to do for you, it's, uh, it's probably, this might be a typical Friday or Saturday night for some of you crazy guys out there. This is um, the bad and the ugly. And there's a rhyme in here, actually, what you can only get away with, you know, I think. And you'll hear it in a minute. Last night I picked up a brick and broke a window. 
I watched the glass smash and crash. I watched it explode and splinter. It was the chemist that had done. And being too pissed to run, I just stood there and raised a finger. The alarm went berserk and I remember a taxi and somebody screaming they'd like to crack me as I stumbled and staggered all over the place. I was out of control and out of my face. Look, I know it's not clever and I know it's not hard, but my girlfriend pissed off and my dog had just died and what with a vodka, the whiskey and Stella, I was at war with the world. And my head was on fire because living's a bitch unless you're healthy and rich and I can tell you right now, I'm neither. I'm just hung over and struggling with guilt. Just glad it was glass and not blood that was spilled. And I must have got nicked because I'm laid in a cell and my guts are churning and a stale pissy smell spilling my nose and I've got mud and shit and stains on my clothes. What have I done? What was I thinking? Just hours ago I was laughing and drinking. Now it's all damage, a criminal record. Hundreds of pounds I can't afford. What an expensive brick. I just hope that Kemi stays on. Because I'm going to be sick. Thank you. <laughs> Semi autobiographical, that one. <laughs> um, right, this next one. This may or may not be a true story, actually. I don't know whether I want to sort my cat to it. But I'll see what sort of reaction I get. This is. Um, this is. An emergency case. Stacy had this thing for firemen. She looked, seeing them in action, so she'd dial 999. Another false alarm, but she didn't care. To her, it was worth it. The uniform, the helmet, the blue light flashing, all that muscle dashing around, turned her on. She knew it was wrong, irresponsible, criminal, that it was dangerous. But that was the buzz. It was fantastic. All that panic, all that drama. It was down to her. She was in control. Just at one call. The silly cow. Anyhow, it was one Friday morning. She was all geared up for phoning them again when I knocked on her door. I'd called a few days before, but she was out. Awaiting the fire brigade, no doubt, percolating at some unlit building whilst across town, one was probably burning down. Well, I've come to remind her about the tenor that she'd borrowed weeks ago, so she locked the door and let me in. Then she began rabbiting about all kinds of stuff. How she'd had enough of home of being single, that her life was boring or exciting. You see, her obsession for firemen was no great secret, but shit, I've got to admit, I went dizzy when she told me she was a hoax caller. It just slipped out of her as she was searching for a person. What made it worse? She thought it was funny. The stupid, crazy bitch. Look, I'm no snitch, but I wanted to grass. The daft lass needed her head tested. She could be arrested for it. That's serious shit, Stacey, I said. Straight over her head. She wasn't listening. It was nothing. A pretend fire? Yeah, what's the matter? Nobody dies, and besides, I like it. All those fit blokes running about. I let myself out. What I just heard, every single word, chilled me. Stacey was insane. Her brain was mince. I ain't seen her since, in fact, it's been about a year. But whenever I hear that noise or see those brave boys race by me, I think of Stacey, who I'm disgusted to say, never did pay back the tenor, I lent her. Thank you. <laughs> right, I, I was only going to do four, but I've, I've got a couple of minutes left, so I'll do some tried and tested. Uh, this is Debbie. At school, Fat Debbie was the joke, whose only friends were crisps and coke, who invited buns and bags of chips to sell on her arse and hips, which gave nothing in return. Just calories she couldn't bear. So Debbie cried and Debbie grew, like the bullets sometimes do, because every time we were wrong, food made it all forgotten. Kids are kids, you know the crack. They find your weakness, then attack. But what I'm building up to say is I saw Debbie the other day as I stepped into a lottery queue. Are you Mike? How are you? I held my jaw, about to pass. It's Debbie, I was in your class. Debbie, Debbie. Then it struck me, big fat Debbie. It can't be. A 
swift scan up and down delivered a ponytail, blondy brown greenish eyes, rich full lips, a completely different ass and hips. All right, Deb, long time no see. Careers office, 83. And I bet during all that time, she's probably lived down the street near mine. Anyway, Debbie gave a girl some money, then crossed the fingers as she passed me and I, a former member of those little shits, who'd kicked her self-esteem to bits. Bought three lucky dips and went home, straight in and on the phone. Hey, do you remember Debbie? Yeah, the ugly cow. I've just seen her. She's beautiful now. Thank you. Thank you.